Hello everyone, we are honored to be here at ISDA 2021 conference to present our work entitled How Knowledge-Driven Cloud Generalization Affects Classical Machine Learning Algorithms for Monolabel Supervised Classification. This work has been done by myself, Hussein Din Turkey, with Dr. Mohamed Ali Hashtayeb and Dr. Mohamed Nawisha from Data Engineering and Semantics Research Unit, University of Sfax, Sfax, Tunisia. We we'll begin with a brief introduction about our research unit. The University of Sfax is located in Tunisia, North Africa, 270 kilometers far from Tunis, the capital. It is a leading university in Tunisia and it is among the best African universities in computer science research. The Data Engineering and Semantics Research Unit has been recently created in September 2021 as a part of the University of Sfax. It is specialized in various aspects of computer science research, ranging from semantic web and NLP to social network analysis and big data. We are currently developing real-life applications of knowledge-based systems, and we are trying to publish our research finding in highly referred scholarly journals. Now, let's move to the topic of our paper. As you already know, there are many types of supervised classification. There is the binary classification, the monolabel classification, and the multilabel classification. Particularly, the monolabel classification assigns a single label to every item, and the labels support one aspect of the items. When we try to see the metrics that are used to evaluate monolabel classification algorithms, we find out that most of them, if not all of them, are just statistical and probabilistic measures that are not considering the semantic features of the labels. We have here precision, recall, accuracy, if measures, confusion matrices, rock and rock genie, and they are all based on probabilistic statistic. When we evaluate the metrics that are used for the assessment of monolabel classification algorithms, we find out that there are two major concerns related to them. The first one is that the sample size per class should be significant to have a precise accuracy rate. The second one is the problem of the class imbalance. In fact, it is easy to have an image for a cat, but it is very difficult to have an image of a crocodile or of an endangered species. Well, these two problems combined are commonly found in an habit in monolabel classification processes, which is the class generalization. Let's begin by defining what is the class generalization. Simply, it is the substitution of one or more labels by a common label. For example, we can, for example, we can change the label of German Shepherd Husky by dog. Okay, in this context, we have two types of class generalization. There is a statistical class generalization that is based on the similarity between recognized patterns for classes. In fact, the similarity here is computing using statistical correlation measures, for example, the cosine similarity. The second type of class generalization is the knowledge-driven class generalization. 
In fact, it is based on the semantic features of the labels. Two labels are substituted by their common parent class according to the semantic resource, where this resource can be an object graph, an ontology, or a taxonomy. Common example of these resources can be Mesh, Wikidata, WordNet, BubbleNet, etc. So, we will study here the effect of knowledge-driven class generalization on the accuracy of the machine learning models for monolabel classification. We will begin with, by explaining our approach. Wikimedia Commons is a large scale image that, that is available at https double point slash slash commons.wikimedia.org. It includes 78 million media files. It has a multidisciplinary coverage and it is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And that's why we think that this can be a resource for our analysis. In fact, it includes a robust semantic description for the images. As you see here, the page for the image includes the title, some metadata, and the license, and the categories. And this kind of categories is what we will use for our analysis. As you see here, the categories are also categorized, making the category tree for this resource. This category tree is what is called the Wikimedia Commons category graph. You may ask me why we should use Wikimedia Commons. Well, when we talk about uh, image dataset that use a hierarchical structure or a hierarchical categorization, we find out that most of them have two levels of classes. For example, the CIFAR 100 has one superclass, and this is the level one, and a class, and this is the level two, and that's all. And for CIFAR 100, we deal with animals only. However, when we deal with Wikimedia Commons, we see that most of the the categories are most of the items are represented by three levels of categories and the representation is multidisciplinary and that's why we advocate for using wikimedia commons as a resource for research studies on image classification how we will do our analysis based on Wikimedia Commons. Well, we'll begin by constructing an image data set based on Wikimedia Commons. In fact, we will take a subset of the Wikimedia Commons category graph that is composed of three levels. The first level is class one, the second level is class two, and the third level is class three. Well, for the class three categories, 50 images are represented for each class, and three classes are represented for each class two category, and three class two categories are assigned to class one category. And finally, the two class one categories are assigned to, their, to uh, the common parent of all the categories that is animal. 
because we are dealing with an animal data set here. Okay. So when we do this, and we have our data set, we are generating source code for the supervised classification using classical machine learning models from a tool that is available online. This tool is called Train Generator and is developed by Johan Sricker. And Johan Sricker is from TU Berlin and he has developed a very nice tool and it is flexible. You have just to uh, choose the parameters for your analysis, the model, what is the library that we will use, etc. What is the, the data set? And he will generate, and the tool will generate with you the source code that you need. Finally, after getting the data set and the source codes, we will analyze the effect of knowledge driven class generalization. We will consider for our study five classical machine learning models perceptron, random forest, support vector machine, car nearest neighbors and decision tree. We will consider the accuracy rate as the statistical evaluation metric for our analysis. We will compute the accuracy rate for class one, class two, and class three to study general knowledge driven class generalization. All labels are generalized to their direct parent categories. This is the definition of the general knowledge driven class generalization. We will then compute the accuracy rate for modified class data datasets where one class two category substitute is subcategories in class three to study restricted knowledge driven class generalization. We will only consider 50 items from the considered class two category to prevent class imbalance effects. Okay. As we explained the methods that will be used for our work, let's now move to the results and discussion. When computing the accuracy rate for class one dataset, class two dataset, and class three dataset, we find out that the accuracy rate can either increase or decrease with knowledge-driven class generalization with a more significant dependency for to increase with knowledge driven class generalization. Well, this kind of behavior is also confirmed for statistical class generalization as proven by previous research studies. When it comes to our example, we find out the better accuracy for the decision tree and the random forest. But I should Disclaim here that this should vary per the type of the classified images. So, as you have seen in our previous slide, the general knowledge driven class generalization did not bring to us new findings. So, I think that we should go forward and see what is the effect of the restricted knowledge driven class generalization on the accuracy rates. So we have done the experiment and we have found out the following results. We have found two main situations. We have found that restricted knowledge driven class generalization can increase the accuracy rate of mach classical machine learning algorithms as shown in red. You see here that when we did class three plus cat, we get a better result than the global generalization for class two. So, but we have found something strange as well. We found out that the restricted knowledge 
driven class generalization can decrease the accuracy rates of classical machine learning algorithms as shown in green. So you can find that when you generalize one kind of categories, we can find out values that are worse than the ones of the class three dataset. So these two findings would invite us to think of a better for reformulation of the effect of the knowledge-driven class generalization. In fact, such a reformulation is needed and can be more useful than the empirical findings defined in previous scholarly publications. In fact, the explanation we found out is that we should make a confusion aware theory of the effect of knowledge-driven class generalization on classical ML algorithms. For example, here, from the examples, from the findings of the previous slides, we found out these two scenarios. I will just explain them a little bit. Okay, the blue color demonstrates the confusion propagation for each situation, and the green arrow defines the confusion between two classes. So these are two classes, and the green arrow between them means that these, these two are confused. So the two classes here and the blue classes here are confused. The black arrows just define class subcategorization. This means that, for example, C21 is the subclass of C11. That's all. So when we find out is that when we do, when the confusion, the confused uh, kind of uh, categories have the same direct parent, the confusion would be restricted to, the, to their parent. And we will get by that a better accuracy rate. However, when the two confused categories have different direct parents, the confusion will be spread and we will get a decrease of the value of accuracy rates. So what is the, the value of such a theory and such a result? Well, this can be used to debug machine learning models to find their limitations. We can just generalize uh, kinds of uh, categories one by one to their direct parents and see what, how the accuracy values will, will vary according to every context. Then we can have an explainable supervised classification algorithm where the motivation of using each machine learning model is clear. For example, by studying the limitations of every model, we can find out that, for example, uh, a model X can uh, classify animals more or better than, uh, for example, cars. And that's why we will use that model for the classification of the animals and not for the classification of the cars. The third application that we, we think of is that this can help us ha to have the best compilation of the considered classes for a monolabel supervised classification. In fact, we can just do all the possible combinations and find out how the categories should be to have the better accuracy for our application. To sum up, knowledge-driven class generalization effects in monolabel classification can be very useful to study classical machine learning algorithms and consequently to enhance them for better accuracy rates. 
So that's all for our presentation. So here are our contacts. So please feel free to contact us for more explanation or to ask us about our work. We'll be happy to answer you. Thank you.